What is the Bible? The Bible is believed by Christians to be the Word of God. It is Holy Scripture. The Bible is a collection of many books written by several authors over a period of nearly 1,000 years. But how do the books of the Bible come together? The canon of Scripture was decided by councils of church leaders in the 4th century. The canonical scriptures are the list of inspired books recognized by the church to constitute the Holy Scriptures. The Bible first underwent translation into Latin from the original Greek and original Hebrew. And then during the Reformation period, with the advent of the printing press, the Bible was translated into many, many languages. Dozens of English translations exist that interpret the original sources in slightly different ways. We'll now take a brief look overlook of the books within the Bible itself. The two sections of the Bible are the Old Testament, or the Hebrew Bible, and the New Testament. There is a third section called the Apocrypha that exists. It's a collection of writings from what's known as the intertestamental period between the Old Testament and the New Testament. These writings aren't in all Bibles, and they're not considered on the same level of authority as Scripture. However, the Episcopal Church uses them. They're read from time to time, but the level of authority is not that of Scripture. Looking to the Old Testament, by the time that the Old Testament was written, around 850 BCE or so, the stories had already been handed down by generations through oral tradition. The stories being told revealed how individuals in Israel understood themselves and their nation and their God. The Old Testament reveals a God that is experienced as almighty, faithful, and merciful as creator and judge of all. The Old Testament has the promises made to Abraham, the establishment of the Old Covenant, to sustain and guide the Hebrew people in the Old Testament. That was the Old Covenant, God's promise to Abraham to make his descendants number the stars. God seeking out of his people and his saving acts that bring the people back to him from sin are depicted as well. The first five books are known as the Pentateuch or the Torah. Genesis is the first book. It contains the stories of creation, the fall of humanity, God's covenants with Noah and Abraham. The stories of the patriarchs Isaac, Jacob, and Joseph are found in this book. The second is Exodus, the stories of Moses and the Israelites escaping from Egypt and pursuing the promised land. This is where we find the Ten Commandments and the 40 years of wandering in the wilderness. Leviticus is an instruction manual of sorts. It emphasizes ritual, legal, and moral practices, yet they do reflect the worldview from the creation story that God wishes to live with humanity. Repentance and forgiveness are at the heart of these rituals. The fourth book is Numbers. It follows Moses and Israel's journey from Mount Sinai. The Israelites, however, have an inability to fully trust God, and this leads to that wandering in the wilderness for 40 years before they finally reach the promised land. The book of Deuteronomy recounts then again this 40 years of wandering. It recounts the law and an assurance that repentance will always bring the people back to God. The next section of the Bible contains what is known as the historical books. The books are not historical in the modern sense of the word. In pre-modern times, histories were generally written for di didactic purposes, for embellishing rulers and kings and their achievements, or to support an ideological goal. These books tell of the entry of the Israelites into the Promised Land. After the Exodus, they tell of the leadership of the biblical judges and military leaders, the move from tribal rule to monarchy and the dividing of the kingdom, as well as the Babylonian captivity. Next up, we have the poetic text. These writings demonstrate the depths of faith, doubt, joy, and sorrow. They tell stories of human struggles and experiences with the nature of the God of Israel. The last and the largest section of the Old Testament is the book on the prophets. This next section of the Old Testament includes many of God's chosen messengers known as prophets and their interactions with God and humanity. First up, we have this section known as the major prophets. Isaiah includes prophecies of judgment awaiting the nations that are persecuting Judea. It also builds a powerful narrative of a new king, a servant who suffers on behalf of those that he will come to rule. Jeremiah writes in exile warning of the disaster that sin can bring while also anticipating hope in God's redemption. 
Ezekiel tells of the judgments against Israel, but it also foretells of future blessings by God. The book of Daniel tells of God's plans to save Israel. It is a combined vision of historical prophecy and prophecy of the end times. Finally, Lamentations is a poetic uh, grouping of writings that laments the destruction of Jerusalem in 586. Next up, we have the Minor Prophets. This is a group of 12 books of 12 prophets. And in this section, they all generally deal with the same themes, God's pending judgment on both Israel and the surrounding nations, as well as God's coming restoration. The intertestamental period is this period following the last prophet of the Old Testament, Malachi, 400 years passes before the New Testament, and this is where our apocryphal the New text. Text already. The New Testament introduces the new covenant, God's promise of forgiveness that is found in repenting and following Jesus Christ. The four Gospels are at the beginning of the New Testament. They provide narratives of Jesus' words and deeds, his earthly ministry, the calling of the disciples, miracles, parables, and eventually culminate in his trial, death, and resurrection. The gospel is the good news of salvation through Jesus Christ, proclaiming Jesus as Lord, and it offers a way to eternal life in Christ. The synoptic gospels are Mark, Matthew, and Luke. They're known as this because they present very similar accounts and themes of the life of Jesus. The fourth gospel, the gospel of John, is full of interpretation on the meaning of Jesus' life. It includes many signs and many symbols, leaving out a lot of the narrative pieces found in the other Gospels. It emphasizes greatly Jesus' role as the Son of God. The next book is the book of Acts. This depicts the start of the church. It follows the apostles as they spread the good news of Christ to the Jews and the Gentiles. This is the day of Pentecost, the conversion of Paul on the road to, the, to Damascus. It ends in the arrival of Paul in Rome. The early acts of the church are all found in the book of Acts. The next section is the letters or the epistles. In the epistles, we find the great portion of the majority of the New Testament is found in these texts. Paul writes a majority of these letters to individuals or groups within the early church. The letters reflect specific issues that the recipients were experiencing while also touching on matters of Christian doctrine that is applicable to all. These letters chronicle the beginnings of theology and Christian community. Next, we have what is known as the pastoral epistles, 1st and 2nd Timothy and the epistle to Titus. These are known as pastoral epistles because they're addressed to individuals with pastoral oversight of churches and they discuss issues of Christian living. We then have the three short Johannine letters. They're associated with the Gospel of John and its theme and community, which is why they're known as the Johannine letters. Finally, we have the book of Revelation. The Revelation to John is an apocalyptic writing. Through its symbolism and images, it depicts the cosmic battle of good versus evil. It reveals a vision of God's final victory over evil and the redemption of of the world to God's purposes. We call the Bible Holy Scripture because we believe it reveals the God we worship. The Bible is rich in its history, poetry, wisdom, and so much more. It's full of heroic and flawed individuals who are trying to do God's will and often they are failing. The Bible is a love story of God to his people and it is of God's people for their God. As people of God, God's word speaks to us today. Scripture is inspired by God. The Holy Spirit guides us in interpreting the truth that we find in Scripture. In the Episcopal tradition, we believe the Bible is the word of God. It contains all things necessary for salvation. However, God is revealed beyond Scripture, beyond it in the living word that is Jesus Christ, beyond it in the world today and through the work of the Holy Spirit and the revelation that we find in the fullness of God. Jesus is God's ultimate revelation. It is in Christ that we should approach Scripture as we read, as we are nourished, as we are inspired by the words and fed and taught. It is in Christ and through Christ that Scripture reveals to us things about God and about the truth that bring us into closer relationship with God, leading us to our ultimate destiny.